whatever you wind up doing is exactly what you should be doing. And I have not behaved one single day of my life. Not one day of my life have I behaved, and I am fine. I need your help. I can't tell you what it is. You can never ask me about it later, and we're going to hurt some people. Who's Kyle we're going to thank? Hello, hello. Thank you for joining us on the Nikki Maduro show on this Friday Eve. Thank you to everybody that's always in the comments so early before I'm even here. We do have a great show coming up. Yes, we will be talking about Elon Musk. Um, you know, is Elon Musk bad for us or is Twitter bad? X. I, I like calling it Twitter. I feel like it's like my own personal protest against Elon Musk. Uh, but yeah, he, Eric is the one that said it. Always thought Elon's end goal was running Twitter into the ground. He has. Uh, if you don't know the headline, I think this came out last week. Twitter X, whatever. It's worth less than half of what Elon Musk paid for it a year ago. Anybody else that did that would be called a terrible business person. And yet there are people that defend Elon Musk because he is smart. The guy is smart. You can be more than one thing, right? You can be kind of a genius that does SpaceX and comes up with Tesla technology and all sorts of things, right? And still not be good as a owner of a social media company. Um, I do not think that Elon Musk has the temperament or the mental capacity to handle um, running a social media company. But we'll get into that because his latest headline, Elon Musk says he bought Twitter not because of his ego, not because he had announced it and then, you know, obviously messed with the stock price. So he bought Twitter to save the world from San Francisco's mind virus. So we'll get into that. Who has the mind virus? Uh, yeah, Spencer. Elon is scary. You know, the thing is, he destroyed Twitter. I'm just going to call it Twitter. I, I hate calling it X. I think it's stupid. Um, he destroyed Twitter. I still go on it occasionally. But I have to pick and choose and watch and read very, very carefully. And the thing is, and we'll also delve into other social media headlines. For instance, in Europe, Meta is going to let people opt out of getting ads and things like that. I don't know if that business model is sustainable for what social media is and was. Social media was, I can go on it for free. I could post, you know, pictures of my dog, my kids, my food, whatever. And in return, I understand that they're collecting my data. And then they're feeding me ads and, and crap because of that, right? Now they're saying, we're not going to feed you ads. What are you doing with my data? You know damn well they're still collecting it. You know they're still collecting it. So is there a way of opting out of that? Is there a way of making sure that they don't have that? Or do they just get to have it, but they just don't feed me the ads, right? I mean, that's kind of this trade-off that we have. So we'll get into that. And would you pay for no ads on social media? I, for instance, would be very concerned if, you know, playing with the algorithm, doing ad campaigns or whatever on social media went away simply because, you know, we use YouTube, we use algorithms to kind of elevate uh, our exposure online. Now you can pay for it. The ROI on Facebook ads is not great. You know, targeted ads can work. I personally think that, you know, more directed ads uh, coming to the show, doing those sorts of things makes more sense for the dollar amount and the evidence that it actually works. Right. But if that goes away for some businesses, t-shirt, I'm thinking like t-shirts, clothing, all those sorts of things, if that went away, it would significantly change the business model. Remember TikTok? I mean, now the, the U.S. was th thinking of banning TikTok and people were like, my livelihood depends on this, depends on this model where I could do it for free or pay a little bit to kind of boost posts or things like that. And if that changes, that ch fundamentally changes a business model. Now, has this business model been around that long in the grand scheme of things? No. 
but it is something that's been used and, and used so much and is so ingrained in how businesses run online. A change like this could be detrimental. So we will talk about that. Um, I do have a story. I want to bring Kim McAllister on. If she's ready. Are you ready, Kim? Are, are you ready, my friend? I don't know if she's exactly ready. Um, because we got an email. I'm always ready for you. Okay, good. Yeah. I good morning. Good morning, my friend. Good I got morning. an email yesterday. I'm not gonna she didn't she wanted me to share the story with you. Okay. She didn't particularly say to share it on the show. <laughs> um, but anybody that missed our show yesterday, go back because we had a great discussion. We went on a tangent about ghosts, if you remember. Okay. And one of our viewers sent me a long email of a story, and I'm just going to share you a little bit of the story because if oh. this now, I'm is not saying I'm not saying story? that Kim McAllister thinks that all people that believe in ghosts are liars, but let's just let's just get Kim <laughs> McAllister's reaction to said story and see if she thinks people are liars. Okay, so she's so our listener said I was a non-believer until okay. until mm. she visited American Samoa for the very first time. With my husband back in 1996. Wanted to visit his homeland and get an idea of where he grew up. One of the beliefs that Samoans definitely believe in are ghosts. I thought they were crazy <clears throat> until my husband and I visited his late grandmother buried down near the ocean the night our flight left. We went back to the house to pick up our suitcases. My husband was in the shower. I was packing my suitcase on the bed. Something made me look at the window. I vividly saw his grandma's face float by the window. There were very thin shears hanging on the window, but definitely something you could see through. In shock, I ran to the window, pulled the shears back, and to my surprise, nothing was there. To this day, 27 years later, I believe my husband's grandmother, who raised him and he always spoke so kindly of, came to pay us a visit to not only meet me, uh, but to say goodbye before we headed back to California. I now believe when people talk about ghosts. Please share with Kim. <laughs> what if it was somebody just walking by? Well, I mean, obviously I don't you would discount see her. It. You're she calling must have... her a liar. Say she's calling you a liar. She must... No, 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 no. I'm, I'm just looking for alternatives. <laughs> so maybe she knew. Did she? She must have known what the grandmother looked like and seen pictures of her. Obviously, perhaps I would imagine you've seen a picture or two. But maybe you know uh, an, another older Samoan lady happened by, and the grandmother was on her mind, the listener's mind, because she had just visited the grave. And she just kind of, you know, okay. One thing. I'm I just mean, saying, it's possible. It's possible. Oh, look! Right? Look at her! Look at Kim pulling back from calling everybody a liar. I believe, listener. I believe. I I love that story. But yeah, it was. It, she like immediately sent it, and I was just mm -hmm. cracking up. I was like, I know, I it know. It is. It is weird that they just visited the grave, and but it, and it's also nice that she thought the woman wanted to meet her. That is exactly. Nice. See, but I'm not. I'm not completely on board no. i'm not completely on board mm. See, doug says i don't like to share my spirit experiences because people might think i'm crazy that they exist i don't think you're crazy i think sometimes we can talk ourselves into believing something but if she saw it and she believes it then yeah. you know, you know I mean, she was the one who was there not me all the time right i mean mm -hmm. i believe that people can come back people can visit on that note guess i did i did talk i did talk to the dead yesterday who well, it's the Day of the Dead. Right. Right. Well, t today is the second day. There's, today it's, is All it's, Souls Day. All, yeah, it's November 1st and November 2nd yeah. is Dia de los Muertes, right? Mm -hmm. Muertos. Muertos or muertes? Muertos. Muertos. So <laughs> I was reading a lot about Dia de los Muertos, and I didn't want to co-opt another culture's thing for my no, own. No, but you can educate yourself on it, right? Right. So I was reading about it and talked yesterday on the after party about it. And, it, and I like the idea of this there being this one day mm -hmm. where if there were a realm different realms right. the barrier would be gone mm -hmm. and then you could reunite and i like the idea of talking to your loved one without sorrow mm, right? yes so that you the sadness goes away and you're just for that one moment reunited so there doesn't have to be all this kind of somberness about it so you know do you ever just talk to people you've lost 
Yes, all the time. You know, okay, so I I did that. My husband's sister died of breast cancer, and she was really young. She was 32 when she died. And my kids still lament not having an, a relationship with this aunt this that they know existed, but they don't know the person. Right. They never right? met. Right. So I, I like got into this conversation with her. Now I sound like the wacko jacko. No. I got into this conversation with her in my head where I just kind of told her about them and told her what was going on with all of her nieces and nephews. At the end of it, I'm in tears. And I'm thinking, Aww. this was not supposed to be a sad thing. This was supposed to be a happy thing. But were you sad or were you just kind of remembering and it brought an emotion up? Yeah, remembering. Yeah, yeah. and it's okay to cry. I don't know. And I know that you're not religious. But the reason why I say yes so quickly is because mm-hmm. prayer can be very much like that. And I pray every day. Mm-hmm. Um, and I sometimes I pray to my God. Sometimes I pray to specific people. Um, you know, my grandmother lived with me for many years. We had a complicated relationship. Um, I loved her to death. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah. And so sometimes, you know, something will happen and I'll think of her and I'll laugh, you know what I mean? And then I talk to her, you know, Mm -hmm. and, um, it's not, it's not a weird thing to do if you grow up doing it, but you remind me of a friend of mine that I know years ago and she had never prayed and she was just fascinated by it. You know what I mean? Like this idea of talking to a spirit, an energy, a go- fill in the blank, right? Mm-hmm. A person that you used to know because she didn't grow up like that. And uh, and it is, it can be very comforting and it can be very emotional. So it doesn't surprise me that you, that you cried at all. Yeah. 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 You know, I mean, it's great. Um, it, it's a good thing to do also because sometimes you could say things, right? That you weren't able to say or didn't have the chance to say or something like that. Uh, Gordon says, my first wife's aunt was close to death and talking to her dead relatives who told her it was going to be okay to pass. Um, Yeah, I mean, it's just, John says, when my grandmother died later that night, oh, I think the story started earlier. I apologize, Mm John. Um, But yeah, he was talking about an angel appeared outside the window, took a picture of it, and the picture appeared. Wow. The angel appeared in the photo, but I can't find it on my phone. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'll try to find it. That's That's... That's amazing. Um, okay. Well, we're not going to get into the ghost thing again, but I just wanted to share that story. Interesting. Because yeah. um, everybody had like, and it was, I just love the fact that our viewer had to reach out and share the story. If you have other stories, of course, you can always email me. Uh, speaking of which, let's get some business out of the way before we get to the into the meat of the show. Click the thumbs up button, you guys. Uh, YouTube loves it. We were talking about algorithms and social media. Please do that each and every show. The Super Chat is also live. Thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody that comes in and throws us a super sticker, super thanks, a super comment. Uh, also, we have new adorables. As somebody just signed up yesterday. They've been hemming and hawing about it, they said, for a little while. <laughs> to see what they, well, they didn't know if they can afford it. And that yeah. I, I really appreciate people that write to me and they're like, I, I wanted to make sure that obviously that they liked the show, which of course, take your time and they love the show. And they're like, you know what? I've been watching every single day and I might as well become an official Medorable. And so they did. So if you want to be like that person, just go to the Nikki Medoro show.com. There's a Patreon link. I leave it up to you on what you can afford. Uh, but obviously if you could do a dollar a day for every show, that'd be awesome. Uh, if you do more or less, we will totally appreciate it uh, because we're 100% crowdfunded. We do take PayPal. The email for PayPal, which is way easier to remember, is just go to paypal.com, hit send money. The email is the Nikki Maduro show at gmail.com. You will see the show logo and the description will confirm that this is the PayPal for the Nikki Maduro show. So th- there should be no question. Of course, there's also merchandise at the Nikki Maduro shop.com. I think it was Jim or someone yesterday was asking about the Medorable buttons. I do have a limited amount of the original Medorable buttons that I made. I can't put them on the shop because of the business that I use that creates everything. So I'm trying to figure out a way if maybe you guys, whoever wants a button, you guys can just message me similar to the raffle tickets, send me your email address. So I'm still trying to work that out, but I do have the, uh, it's a very limited amount of buttons left over. So I'll figure that out. And when I do, maybe I'll announce that next week on how you guys can get those. So, um, cause I don't need that many buttons. Um, although my husband has one, I have one. Um, so I have a few, Kim's going to get one. Yay. Um, you know, obviously the, the main people over here will have buttons, but yes, uh, I appreciate just everybody that does and supports the show and myself and Kim. 
Um, do you I'm know what main I- people? Yay! Yay! Main yeah, people. I yeah, yes. that's I right. <laughs> no, it's just kind of us every morning, stop in the day. Okay. Um, I do also want to let you guys know we are going to be following the PGE rate hike. We're going to talk about Elon Musk. But first, I, I was cracking up yesterday because it's begun. And I want you guys to tell me early, too early, not too early, because this is what was greeting me. And I don't know if it greeted you all over social media yesterday. It's the one and only Mariah Carey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, no. I know. I, uh, is it too early it, i feel like thanksgiving needs to happen i mm-hmm. understand uh, yeah. that mariah carey has this thing on lock with that song and everything like that i mean when do you start decorating kim i'm still uh, excited to put out my thanksgiving decorations right yeah, now yeah yeah it's too early yeah, the, Gordon, all the christmas early. stuff is at the store it's all they're all oh it's completely yeah. in the store. I yeah. I am not kidding. I sent you the picture of when remember my dog ate all my Halloween cookies. I ended mm-hmm. up finding them again. I'm telling you, the cookies that I saw looked like they were for Christmas or Valentine's Day. I don't understand. I could get behind putting, you know, coats in the summer in the malls because you want to buy your coat now for the the cold season that's coming up. I understand that. Holidays are in order, and we're in November. It is Thanksgiving time. Yeah. I don't dislike Mariah Carey. I actually adore her. Um, there is an album and, and some songs that I just, every time it's on the radio, I am just on top of it. But the funny thing about that video, the reason why I showed it, is because there was a meme that like came out where she, she was in ice and everyone's like, she's thawing because the song is just going to be blanketing the radio. And the fact that she made that video means that she's just really in touch with, pretty the, funny. with the meme. It's too early for Christmas music for me. Yeah, yeah. I agree. It, I mean, mm-hmm. Christmas music, it's way too early. December, though, once December 1st hits, because my daughter tries to act like she doesn't like Christmas music, but she loves that song, then fine. I am all in on Christmas. But November is for Thanksgiving. Let's give some thanks and praise before we move into the consumerism that is sadly wrapped so much into the Christmas season. Donald says it's too early. Went to Starbucks this morning and it's like a switch was thrown. Yesterday was normal and today it's all red. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Oh, uh, we will. And we'll get into it. Maybe we'll, I, you know, I love you too, but they really hammer us on like playing music. Um, it would be awesome if we were to play like our favorite and least favorite Christmas songs. Maybe we'll just eat that day and just have fun with it. So mm. uh, we'll see. Saw some Christmas commercials, Sandy said. Um, yeah. And then, but speaking of Thanksgiving, did you see who's going to be in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade this year? Uh, yes, and then I promptly forgot. Is it Dolly? No. Who is it? But it's Who another it? person. It's another one name, one name uh, superstar. It's Cher. Apparently, That's Cher. right. I was going to tell you that yesterday, and then I it's forgot. It's going to be the opening act. I yes, mean, yes, yes, yes. She doesn't age this woman. I mean, no. I haven't seen her, but I mean, I and she's kind of like Dolly Parton, right? Like Dolly Parton, it, it look, it's like Dolly always looks like Dolly Parton, no matter what year mm-hmm. it is. Cher is kind of the same thing. And I know plastic surgery, blah, blah, blah. But she looks damn good, right? She has to be well into her 70s. Um, yeah, there's just, they're made, they're built different a little bit. But yeah, Cher is going to be in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Here, it's her 97th diff- year. Here's what? a difference between Cher and Dolly. Okay. Dolly doesn't seem like she's ever had a, been a part of a controversy, at least not in my Ooh. lifetime, but I don't remember. Yeah, I don't remember one. I and mean, Cher, you know. every time Cher turns around, now she's got the the daughter-in-law, former daughter-in-law, accusing her of kidnapping her son. Oh. And she's a, a Sonny Bono thing. And then she's a, the, you know the son that that was a daughter and then now and it's like every there's always a, some manner of controversy surrounding share well and it's also how the headlines are written right yeah, it's yeah. you know if you write a, a headline to be scandalous it will be or it could just be a matter of fact right um yeah. dolly is dolly yeah giving her Philanthropy. money to find a covid vaccine yeah. and sharing books with the children of the world and for literacy it's like she's a saint dolly or something yeah exactly uh janet says saw share 
in concert in 2019. She looked amazing. Yeah, it's just, it's one of those things where, and what's old is like new again. And I know these things happen tomorrow. Do you know what I'm going to tomorrow? Just speaking of old versus new. It's, I guess, the 50th anniversary, which just makes me feel extremely old, of hip hop. And so I'm going to hip hop by the bay. Like Ice Cube, Warren G, all these people are going to be there. Yeah, New Kids on the Block is coming apparently as well. They're they're going to concert. Um, it's just like everything from the '90s. It, it seems like is just come '80s and '90s is coming back around. Uh, Natalie says, "I grew up with my mom calling Dolly a floozy because she showed her cleavage." Oh, I remember growing up and all the jokes about like Dolly Parton can't run her because she'll end up yeah. with two black eyes. I mean, she was a caricature. But right. then she was also an actress, like love her in Steel Magnolias, love her in Nine to Five, right? I mean, it's she's she has run the gambit of, mm. of kind of pop culture references, uh, but she's still badass. And now, yeah, and she's Miley Cyrus's uh, godmother. Uh, she's just really, yeah, she's an amazing woman. Cher, I like too. I loved her in what was the movie that I like? Oh, well, uh, Moonstruck, Mermaids, Ma- Mask mask that was mm-hmm. a good one um yeah you know what i mean so it's like you can do it all but yeah uh share she is going to be i guess the superstar of the macy's thanksgiving parade that's cool which i will not see because i never watch the macy's thanksgiving parade What's i don't wrong think with ever, you i never you always just have it on in the background no no it's never something i think about doing oh. it's always football and i don't know what or i'm still sleeping i don't know i never watch it I've seen like well, clips of it and then I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna, watching that. I'm making a point of watching it this year because we have a listener slash viewer okay. that will be in the parade as a <gasps> tap dancing, dancing Christmas tree. Really? Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, you're going to have to give me their contact info or their, their name so I know yeah. who to look out for. Okay. Well, there we go. She and her troop, her tap dancing troop. Oh, that's are, awesome. They dress up like the Christmas trees and I think that's not their first appearance. They, they do this often and they're kind of known and they go and Hmm. they do the macy's uh thanksgiving day parade yeah she's gonna be with her group and she's if you see the the christmas tree is going by that's her i might i i don't want to i don't want to promise i just don't find it entertaining i mean if i was there that's one thing but like Watching it on TV, I don't know. And the, the the cheesy back and forth with the the news anchors, I just it's not my cup of tea. So. And now with a band kid, now we're gonna have to watch all the marching bands go by. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, riveting. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Maybe you know what? I shouldn't knock it. I don't watch it. I'm knocking something I do not watch. Like I'm totally honest. Like it doesn't matter to me. And then if there's the huge balloons, I'm like, I I would only watch it like NASCAR. Are they gonna pop? Are they gonna hit somebody? Is it gonna blow away? Um, uh, Donald says I always watch it while prepping Thanksgiving dinner. I mean, I watch football. Uh, I usually like have some bourbon uh, cream coffee and I don't, that's not on my list of things to do on Thanksgiving morning, but I'm hosting this year. So, um, cause we have the bigger house and my parents were supposed to be in Israel and they were supposed to be coming oh, home a couple right. of days. They're supposed to be in Israel right now. It just boggles my mind. Mm-hmm. Um, but obviously not going. And so they were going to come home like two days before Thanksgiving and so I was like, I'll host, you know what I mean? It's no big deal. And so, um, yeah, I'll, I might be busy. Sometimes my husband just takes over cooking. It's all right. I don't, I'm not that, you know, ingrained in all of that, but I definitely have, and I will share on this show, I already have a dessert that I'm going to make and it's very easy and it combines two of my favorite things, crescent rolls and cheesecake. So oh, that that sounds really good. Yeah, I'm gonna be making it. Uh, like I'm I'm gonna do a trial run because I bought some of the stuff uh, when I was at the grocery store the other day. I was like, let me just try it because I hate when I I think it looks easy, <laughs> and then I just make it on the day of and it turns out crappy. So I'm gonna make it ahead of time. I'm gonna try it out and then we'll do it again later on. So we'll we'll do that. Yeah, doesn't that sound delicious? I mean, how do you go wrong with cheesecake and crescent rolls? You just you just don't. Um, John says, I enjoy watching the parade when the host is drunk. Um, you can message me if the host is drunk, I'll totally turn it on, but that would, that would be the only entertainment for me as well. Uh, Annie says, we watched it when my mom was in the hospital for the first time. It was pretty good. We enjoyed it. First time seeing it. Yeah. I've never, 
I've never watched it. So I'm just going to be honest. All right, let's do some headlines. When we come back, we're going to talk about Elon Musk. He's making all kinds of excuses for a bad business decision, in my humble opinion. And then we'll also weigh in on PG&E. Um, Loretta Lynch was with us last week, so we knew this was coming. Uh, they're going to raise our rates. My mom was even texting me yesterday. She was just like, "It's gonna." I'm like, it's going to happen. It's just the excuse that they're going to use on why our rates need to go up. So we'll have a little bit of that as well. Uh, and also Jefferson Graham is going to join us. It's Thursday. He's going to join us in the second part of the show. Apple introduced new computers this week and the presentation for the very first time was filmed completely on iPhones, but Jefferson will explain why or if we could do something similar to what Apple did. Like, are they kind of selling us a, you know, some BS over here. Like we can't actually do that. Apple can do it, but can we do that? All right. We'll talk about all of that. So much more right after Kim's news. Now from around the world to up your street, the Nikki Maduro show presents news. Czar Kim McAllister. Hundreds of Americans could leave the Gaza strip today through the border crossing with Egypt. The Gaza border crossing authority issued a new list of passport holders overnight who have been approved for departure, and the list includes about 400 Americans. At least 300 foreign citizens were able to leave yesterday as Israeli airstrikes continued in that region. Republican senators tried to confirm more than 60 military officers' promotions yesterday. A direct challenge to Republican Senator Tommy Tuberville has been uh, blocking those confirmations yeah. of hundreds of promotions since February. Uh, but the Alabama senator refuses to budge. He's trying to force the Pentagon to overturn its policy of paying travel costs for military members and dependents seeking abortions. And because of that issue, trying to hold up all these promotions motions and confirmations. And the president and other members of uh, Congress have said, this is affecting our national security. Can so, I play you something really quickly? Please because do it. it was so funny. <laughs> you know, and it, it kills you a little bit when someone you just cannot stand makes the point that you're trying to make, right? So Lindsey Graham is one of those people that's calling out Tommy. And, um, here he, here he is on the floor because he's holding up promotions of people that are qualified. This is These are military promotions. And, and so I'm going to play it for you because I had it ready because uh, I figured you were going to talk about it today. And I just can't stand Lindsey Graham. He's such a hypocrite and two-faced butthead. But um, here he is making the point that we're all trying to make. The Pentagon has issued a legal opinion I disagree with saying this doesn't violate the Hyde Amendment. I disagree with it. Here's what's going to happen. You've just denied this lady a promotion. You did that. All of us are ready to promote her because she deserves to be promoted. She had nothing to do with this policy. Let me say it again. Everybody in this body could find an issue with any administration they don't agree with. And what we're going to do is open up Pandora's box. Today is abortion policy. If we take back the White House, we'll go back to the Mexico City policy, limiting dollars to be given to overseas entities that are engaged in the abortion business. Some pro-choice people don't like that. What would happen if they put a hold on all the officers because they don't agree with the Republican administration? There's a reason this, is, this has not been done this way for a couple hundred years. No matter where you believe it or not, Senator Turbeville, this is doing great damage to our military. I don't say that lightly. I've been trying to work with you for nine months. Folks, if this keeps going, people are going to leave. Let me tell you how the system works. You have 18 months, I think, from the time you're promoted to pin on. And if you don't make that gate, your time and grade up or out rule kicks in. There's some people that are waiting to be promoted that if they don't get promoted soon, they're going to be out of the military. Now, how does that help anybody if they're qualified? There's not one senator in here that could not find a reason to object to an administration policy. And so he makes yep. the, that excellent point. It's like this sets a very bad precedent of, oh, my God, now we're going to basically hold our military hostage. Yep. Our military 
people, like literally our military, the only thing we always have money for, right? We always have money for war. We always have money for war. We've never been like, you know, we really wanted to go to war, but we just couldn't find that those dollars. Hmm. We always have money to go to war. Okay. And now we are, our national security is at risk because of this asshat who's holding everything up over abortion rules. It's, it's ridiculous and they need to get it in order. And I'm telling you the Republican party, it's, they're just in disarray and they're ruining this country. They got to get it together. Well, you can see now they're fighting with each other. Exactly. That's what I mean. It's, it's absolutely ridiculous. And, uh, I I don't know where it ends. I really don't. But what do you do with a guy like Tuberville, Tuberville, when you have him, you know, kind of a single issue guy who's decided to hold the nation nation hostage because he can, Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, you know, even well, the members of his own party are saying, what are you doing? Yeah. And Randy's like, why doesn't Mitch McConnell just tell him to sit down and shut up? Believe me, I am sure they have. But at the same mm-hmm. time, he can do what he's doing. Mm-hmm. These are these rules. Again, it the 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 rules that Congress you know runs by, a lot of them are just because we agree to do it. But not doing it, there's no punishment for. Trump exposed this all of the time, right? Yeah. It's like, well, we just don't do that because it's not the right thing to do. Well, it doesn't mean I can't do it, right? And so that's what happens. I agree um, with yeah. Maude. One senator should never have so much power. Yep, it's exactly. insane. Exactly. It's crazy. Uh, yeah, I don't I don't get that. And I didn't know the thing about you have 18 months for your promotion. And then well, yeah. And then all of a sudden, like, if yeah. you don't, you're out like, OK, well, I guess I'm not getting from. Well, you don't just get a stand in the holding pattern forever. You either have a job or you don't. And these people right. aren't going to have a job in the military. They're qualified. No. And now, look, we're going to lose them. That's ridiculous. Yeah, it is. It's it's it's, uh, it's disgusting, the hold mm-hmm. that this has had and the attention that it's taken from other things. Exactly. Meanwhile, jobless claims are up. The Labor Department says the number of Americans who applied for first time unemployment benefits for the week ending October 28th jumped 5000 from the previous week's revised total. The number came in at 217000 jobless claims. Mm. Former Arkansas Governor Asa Hutchinson will not be on the South Carolina GOP presidential primary ballot after missing a filing deadline Tuesday. (sighs) Hutchinson posted on social media yesterday that he didn't file because South Carolina is a winner-take-all state and has two favorite South Carolina candidates, referring to Senator Tim Scott and former uh, Governor Nikki Haley. He said the best way, it's the best way to... uh, elect non-Trump delegates. So, okay. Okay. Okay, whatever. Pope Francis will be attending a United Nations environmental meeting next month in Dubai, and he's the first pope to ever do it. Hmm. The pope said on Wednesday he expects to be in Dubai from December 1st through the 3rd. He's expected to use the conference to push his recent appeal for action to curb global warming. Toxicology tests reportedly show Matthew Perry did not have fentanyl or meth in his system when he died. They're still taking some time to run some other tests, but at least we know that much. No fentanyl, no meth. That according to TMZ, which reported Perry tested negative for both substances. A more in-depth analysis is being conducted to see if harmful amounts of any other drugs Mm. were present in his blood. I mean, it's not hard. I don't know. It's not hard to believe that as hard as he was on his body, that he he would go into cardiac arrest. Mm -hmm. And when you're in water, that can lead to tragic consequences, right? I mean, so, you know, I'm fascinated. I'm listening to Britney Spears' book right now that's read by Michelle Williams. Um, But I'm fascinated by Matthew Perry now, and I want to read his book. Like, And it's sad that this is the reason why I'm even wanting to read his book is because of his passing, but whatever. Um, Apparently... He really gets uh, in depth. And if you ever know anybody, what I've what I've read from the reviews of his book is if you or someone, you know, has ever dealt with addiction, whether Mm -hmm. it's alcohol, opioids, whatever, uh, that this book really is an honest kind of disclosure about the hell that that is. Right. And how hard it is to get out of it. And one of the saddest quotes that I, I read that he said was that he was upset that out of the six of the members of Friends, that he was the one that had to deal with this, right? That he's the one that had to have the addiction and and that he had to have this disease that that is addiction. And and not that he's mad at them, but he's just so sad that it was him. And mm-hmm. 
you know, it's just, it's, it's really, it's really, really hard and, and it's sad. And, um, yeah, it's, it's sad that he died so young. Well, add this to the list of places that Jimmy Hoffa might be buried. <laughs> A team of cold case experts. <laughs> no, it wasn't Jimmy Hoffa's ghost. Woo. A team of cold case experts is out with a report that says the former Teamsters boss is buried in the parking lot of the Milwaukee Brewers ballpark. Ooh. The group Case Breakers said Hoffa's body is buried where third base used to be at County Stadium. That is currently under the parking lot at American Family Field. The theory is Hoffa's body was dug up and moved to the parking lot when the new stadium was built in 1996. Of course, Hoffa's been missing since 1975, and there have been dozens of theories about what happened to his body. Is it under the old third base. All I know is don't have Geraldo look heart. for it. <laughs> no. Mm -mm -mm. You remember, right? He was like, he was like confident that he had, wasn't it Jimmy Hoffa's body that he was confident that he had found and never bothered to open the thing beforehand and did it live on TV and there was like nothing, nothing inside. Yeah. Couldn't have happened to a better person, though. That was Speaking awesome. of the ballpark, you know, mm. we've got new World Series champions. The yeah, Texas we Rangers. do. Mm -hmm. For Bruce the first Bochy, time man. in their franchise history, they've won it. The Texas Rangers defeated the Arizona Diamondbacks 5-0 in Game 5 of the Fall Classic in Phoenix. Mitch Garver delivering the go-ahead run in the seventh inning after the Rangers were no hit through the first six innings. So yeah. congratulations to the Texas Rangers. Not that and I'm Bruce a... Bochy, he has the touch, yeah. man. I am mm -hmm. telling you, he has the touch. And that's just first year with the Texas Rangers. First year, and he takes them and wins this, the World Series. That's amazing. Uh, and I would also like to note that today is Deviled Egg Day. So if you're a fan of deviled eggs, oh, this is the day for you. Why do you tell you. me these things? Now you, you guys know where devil, I need to go. Eat all the deviled eggs. Mm -mm -mm. Maybe I'll just make them. We have so many leftovers in my fridge. I even told my kids, I'm like, I'm not making dinner for the next two days. We have so many leftovers from things we've eaten out and made. And I'm like, right. you aren't guys are eating that. I'm not making any more food. But shoot, I might have to make some deviled eggs. Are you a fan of the deviled egg? Oh, my God. I love deviled eggs. I can eat one scrambled egg and I'm full. I can eat six. Teen deviled eggs and I'm not like I, <laughs> isn't that the weird phenomenon I don't understand it's like, it's like jello right there's always room for one more deviled same egg same amount but yes when but you it's could, not it's, it's not it's the so same good. amount it is yeah. so good yeah oh, I love same. I'm telling you and you, uh, if Sasha's watching or Lori Teller I put in uh in the mystery box uh, a coupon uh, gift card to lazy dog they have the deep fried deviled eggs that are so freaking good um, no, but I, I can't go to the lazy dog again. I can't eat out anymore. I, I'm, I have eggs though. And I have eggs that are a little, they're not fresh, fresh, which are the best ones to make out of deviled eggs. So, oh, you have a lot of deviled egg fans out here. Look at this. Do you like deviled eggs? I love, I love eggs. deviled eggs. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's just, but the mm. thing is, is they're kind of a pain in the ass to make. They take a while because you have to boil the eggs and you have to make the filling and you have to do all that. I always feel like that's a lot of effort just to go. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> And that's what it is too. <laughs> Bump. I just ate. I just ate a whole egg. Bump. Took me an hour, <laughs> but there you go. But at the same time, it's like, well, if not me, then who? Right? If I'm not gonna spoil myself with something <laughs> I want to eat, then who else would I spoil? It's just oh. Thanksgiving's coming. I'll just make a bunch of deviled eggs for that. But Do you have, oh. yeah. now this is a sign of a real deviled egg person. Hmm. Do you own one of those special no. plates with the spots for the eggs? Oh, I think my mom has one of those. Mm. I don't have one though. No, I just put them on a plate and they roll around and they get all messed up. Um, do you? I do have one. See, I, I they're perfect for it. Don't get it me has wrong. Little, it has, and this is kind of morbid. It has little Easter chicks on it. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Well, like it's, it's... you're eating what's featured on the plate. Okay, somebody's asking Little why is it chicks. called deviled eggs? To devil means to combine a food with various hot or spicy seasonings, such as red pepper, mustard, Tabasco sauce, sauce, thereby giving a deviled dish. That's why you it's don't. Called. Do you spice up your deviled eggs? Um, I mean, I put pa not paprika is not spicy. No, no, I don't. I mean, I okay. put mustard in it though. No, mm -hmm. I put mustard. So if mustard is considered a Part of the deviled, yes. I put mustard in it. Natalie loves them too. Um, Jim says, I didn't know this. This this is not true, Jim. Yes, it is. This, it, deviled eggs really make you fart. Yes, they do. <laughs> no, they don't. Eggs, eggs make you fart. Deviled eggs make you toot? Really? Eggs do. Huh. Too many eggs. 
eggs, sulfur, like, bleh. but who cares? Mm. They're delicious. Pop them in your mouth. Eat them. Fart. It's okay. Beth, I make them for my brother during the holidays and eat them. Yes. Of course. Um, yeah. I like I like a little pickle juice in my deviled egg. Uh, mustard, uh, paprika, obviously. Um, yeah. I really like – the evangelicals call them angel pocket eggs. Are you making that up? <sighs> Are you really – Angel pocket, pocket eggs? eggs? Angel pocket eggs. No, I'm not saying you're a liar, least. Natalie. I just want to <laughs> – Oh, that is the Chris. Oh, that's so funny. Stuffed oh. eggs, salad eggs, dressed eggs, angel pocket eggs. Yellow pocket angel eggs is what the Duggars called it. Oh, God. They're deviled eggs. It's a I deviled swear. egg. Just eat I'm, it and I'm shut sorry. Up. You religious right? people, like, th like that's extreme. Like, stop. Stop. It's, you know, the people that don't like Halloween because Satan's everywhere. It's just like, stop. It's. You are putting way too much power into that. Miss Organic throws a couple splashes of Tabasco. I might have to try hers. that. I love Tabasco, mm -hmm. although I like Crystal better. But um, Tabasco Crystal it matters. Uh, I like yeah. Crystal on my like chicken. If I'm going to put some like chicken, um, yeah, it's just it's yeah. The farts smell like sulfur. <laughs> <laughs> I love our listeners. Well, I happy double eggs day. I have to, I'm going to have to make one. I think I'm just going to spoil myself. Maybe, I have to clean mm -hmm. the house and so maybe I'll just boil some eggs, let them cool. And the trick is don't use fresh eggs. So don't go to the store and buy fresh eggs. Hopefully you have some eggs that have been sitting for a week or so in your fridge. 10 days, I think, is the uh, sweet spot. And uh, they peel easier. Fresh eggs don't peel as easy. Mm. That's what I heard. Full of interesting information, aren't you? I watch a lot of food talk. I'm just letting you know. I mm -hmm. do absolutely do. So yeah. Well, this show is crowdfunded. We buy need eggs. The, we need the money to buy the <laughs> eggs to make the deviled eggs on Deviled Eggs Day. No, we really do rely on you guys. And if you're a, a adorable, if you're a longtime supporter of the show, we couldn't be any more grateful. Honestly, yes. thank you. You can help support the show by going to the Nikki Maduro show.com, the Nikki Maduro show.com. The pay Patreon link, the PayPal link is all there. Of course, the super stickers open here on YouTube. And thank you for being here and for all the ways you support us. I'm Kim McAllister. This is the Nikki Maduro show. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. Okay. So Elon Musk is a wackadoo. All right. So he Again? Bought, I know he purchased <laughs> Twitter in 2022 for 44 billion dollars now when this happened everyone's like why are you guys knocking elon musk he's a genius Blah. okay just because you're smart in one aspect of life it does not make you a, a genius in everything doesn't make you good at everything i feel like the ego of some people especially uber rich and smart in other ways people it, it blinds them to the fact that you're not good at this all right he's not good at twitter the posts that he makes, one of the posts that pisses me off that he keeps posting all the time is that cis, like cisgender, is a slur and that it's shame on anybody that uses it. And he has no comprehension of where it comes from. Doesn't, and, and, and in my opinion, doesn't even want to understand where it comes from and what it deals with and anything like that. He just says crap on his social media feed, in my opinion, just for the reaction, like he's an attention whore, right? So he pays $44 billion. A year later, it is worth less than half of that, okay? it's He did not do <laughs> Twitter well. So X, the company formerly known as Twitter, told employees in an internal memo a few days ago that the company is worth $19 billion, down from $44 billion that, that Elon Musk paid for it. Now, why does he still... In, you guys have to tell me, why do we still give a crap about what Elon Musk thinks about Twitter. Well, now he's come out and he was on the Joe Rogan experience, which in and of itself is problematic, but whatever, because he loves to smoke weed or cigars or whatever. And so he was, uh, for three hours, they were talking about all sorts of craps. Rogan finally asked Musk, what was it that ultimately led you to make the decision to buy Twitter? He didn't talk about, you know, the fact that <laughs> He had posted on social media that he wanted to buy it, which, of course, kind of locked him in. And he had a legal battle with Twitter over that because he tried to pull out of it. This is what he said. He says, this is going to sound somewhat melodramatic, but I was worried that Twitter was having a corrosive effect on civilization, that it was just having a bad impact. Part of it is where it's located, which is in downtown San Francisco. While I think San Francisco is a beautiful city, 
And we should really fight hard to kind of right the ship of San Francisco. If you walk around downtown San Francisco, right near the X, uh, a.k.a. Twitter headquarters, it's a zombie apocalypse. Whatever. Um, then he says, I haven't been to San Francisco lately, but he heard it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what Joe Rogan said. He's like, you really can't believe it until you actually go there, Musk said. Uh, he also said, what philosophy led to the outcome? The philosophy was being piped to earth, a philosophy that would ordinarily be quite niche and geographically constrained. So the fallout area would be limited, was effectively given an information technology weapon to propagate what is essentially a mind virus to the rest of the earth. I said the outcome of that mind virus is very clear. If you walk around the streets of downtown San Francisco, it's the end of civilization. He is insane with this way of thinking. Well, maybe we just have the San Francisco mind virus. You know, yes, we're, exactly. We're, right. Our brains are addled because we have the mind virus, of course. <sighs> now, that must I will, be it. I will say this, and He's we're going to have... Um, on this note, just a side note, tomorrow we will have the Chronicles Emily Hoven on. And she ha her latest article has to do with our progressives, you know, are our voters going to dump progressives? Are we going to start moving more towards the middle? You know, has it swung too far? And I will say this, as far as, you know, uh, the sentencing, the, the treatment, all these sorts of things, I feel there was an acceleration to the good idea without understanding that there's a transition involved. There's a lack of human infrastructure, which I always talk about. And so, yes, while on one hand, we would love it if, you know, criminal justice reform led to fewer people of color being um, con uh, jailed for longer periods of time than people of different races and ethnicities simply because they are targeted more, blah, blah, blah. OK, like I understand the criminal justice system. There are huge problems with it, but we swung too quickly to trying to solve it without understanding the growing pains involved in it. Now, as far as what Elon Musk is saying about the zombie apocalypse, this was years in the making, right? This was not having mental health facilities, not having enough drug treatment programs, those sorts of things. It has nothing to do with the fact that Twitter slash X exists in San Francisco. Uh, Randy's asked, what did Musk say that is not accurate about the state of downtown San Francisco? This is what isn't true, Randy. We are not the only city dealing with drug problems. We are not the only city dealing with mental health problems. We are the city that is constantly displayed as an example of that. It used to be Florida, remember? I mean, Mark always does is <laughs> Florida people that are crazy. It still is. Or bath salts and all sorts of stuff. It's happening in other places. We just get it because there is a reverse PR campaign in places that have similar problems and don't want the light shined on them. John says, is the San Francisco mind virus what makes San Francisco sourdough bread so tasty? Could be, could be. Um, I just feel like the problem with Twitter, Elon Musk made worse, okay? If you want to talk about somebody that has infected um, the brain of people, have a social media platform that had the reach of Twitter and then remove all of the safeguards involved. Let people pay a very nominal fee, let's say eight bucks a month, to get a blue check mark to act like they are an expert or the person that somebody thinks they are. That's it. That's the bar. A measly like eight bucks and you, my friend, could seem legitimate. And then every nonsense that you spew on a social media platform that has such a reach can be taken as fact. That's the problem. Not the fact that it's based in San Francisco. It's He is totally ignoring his own impact on social media and his own participation in said mind virus. Like he just tweets things that may or may not be true and then does what so many people do in the current age. I First Amendment right. I'm allowed to say whatever I want to say ignoring the responsibility that when you not only run a platform like X slash Twitter, but you yourself have so many followers that maybe you should take a little bit of pause before you spew nonsense on that platform. It's just, it's absolutely irresponsible. And again, it goes to support my point that just because Elon Musk might be a genius and things like space and, and all those sorts of things doesn't make him someone that should run 
a social media platform. Eric, you're absolutely right. Eric writes, it's become a cesspool of far right trolls. I, when I go on it, I look specifically for something, right? I want to find, let's say, a video that has to do with a protest, right? So I know already the facts. I'm going to legitimate like news sites, Twitter accounts, X accounts, whatever. And I'm doing that. I am no longer what I used to do. I am no longer just randomly just scrolling my feed on Twitter anymore because it's exactly what Eric says. It's it's nonsense. And not only that, I don't know anybody else, but all of a sudden all I'm saying like pornography, like all of a sudden there's boobs or a penis on my, on my feed. I don't follow this person or this account, but all of a sudden there's pornography on my, on my Twitter feed. So I don't need to get random D pics um, on my social media platform at all. Um, well, let me, let me re get some of your responses. Um, Randy says it doesn't matter that San Francisco isn't the only city with drug problems. Musk is talking about San Francisco. What he said about San Francisco is accurate. I will give you a little bit of it. Do we have a drug homeless problem, mental health problem in San Francisco? Yes. But acting like that it's the only place, which in my opinion is what Musk is trying to sell is BS. The fact that he's like, I have to take over Twitter because it's located in the cesspool that is San Francisco is bull crap. I'm sorry. I just, I don't agree with it. I think he always uses, as do people like DeSantis and others, they use San Francisco as a scapegoat for problems that are seen all over the country because it benefits them politically or ideo ideologically. Um, that's why I think they do it. It's no altruistic reason at all. Um, Eric responds to Randy, Twitter used to be a good source for finding news. Now it's utter crap and false information. And that's only one of the problems. So answer me this, riddle me this, Randy. Why has it become worse? Why has Twitter become worse since Elon Musk took it over? Sandy says, I get so tired of hearing negative things about San Francisco when these are problems are happening in all big cities all over the U S exactly, exactly. And what is, what are their solutions? You know, some of them have good solutions. Build more, right? I've talked about this many times. We need to stop, you know, start cutting through the red tape or it will happen for us to get housing built. You know, other states do do it better. But do they have a solution to the opioid crisis? Um, if they have a solution to the mental health crisis and an infrastructure set up, please share it with us. I am totally willing to hear other states and cities' ideas if they have it solved so easily. Maude says, yeah, San Francisco still makes billions off of tourism. X and others dislike that. People, want look, I was outside the other day on Halloween. On Halloween, I'm looking around. I'm like, this, this is why I live here. <laughs> I'm lucky. To, it's the gorgeous weather. And I'm sorry, the stories of, you know, the Tenderloin and some parts of San Francisco, yes, they're true. But I walked, walked 20 minutes from the new uh, KCBS studios to our old ones just the other day. And I'm going to be completely honest with you right now. I passed one person, one person that um, was in need of some sort of help. And you want to know what they were doing? They were just standing on the sidewalk looking out, but like in the middle of the sidewalk, you know, like people shouldn't do that. Um, and walked, I'm telling you, probably what, a mile, a quarter of a mile, whatever, or three quarters of a mile uh, in between, you know, through the financial district, all of that. It wasn't this cesspool of zombies coming at me. It wasn't. Now there are bad areas. I'm not going to say there aren't, but I mean, you take one area. I think I said this before. If you hang out in the toilet all day long, you're always going to see crap. Get out of the toilet. Look around at the other places as well, because it's not all bad. That, that's a high class analogy right there. I mean, I usually cuss when I say it, but that that was my that was my PG-13 of your. But it's true. I mean, honestly, if you only hang out on the Tenderloin, right, if that's all you see of San Francisco. Oh, my God. It is a zombie apocalypse. Absolutely. And that something needs to be done with that areas, that area and areas like it, of course. But you're literally ignoring so much other parts of San Francisco. When I went to go see Lori uh, at the Red Jack Saloon. Perfectly clean. Oh, that right? part of I the mean, city is really nice. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. it's fine. But let's not talk about that area. Let's not do that. I'm not ignoring the bad area, but don't ignore the good area. That's all I'm asking for. And I wonder if all the talk about how awful San Francisco is has affected her business. 
Um, well, I did ask them, like, where do you make most of your money? Fleet Week is huge for them, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Fourth of July, things like that, huge for them. I mentioned they don't do SantaCon because <laughs> they don't want all those drunks and everybody inside um, their bar. But yeah, it's it, it's not fair and it's not accurate to lump San Francisco in with the worst of what it is because mm -hmm. you'll always find that. Right. If I hang out in a homeless encampment, I will think that everyone is homeless. Right. Yeah, you can, sure. you have to expand your view and be mm -hmm. fair if we're going to have a legitimate conversation. If you want to be like Elon Musk and say that the entire place of San Francisco is the zombie apocalypse. Fine. That is your worldview, but it's not accurate. And it doesn't prove a point because your point isn't complete. So that's that's my problem. Yes, yeah, Sam. I, I agree 100%. Nikki, the Tenderloin has been the same it's forever. Mm -hmm. Look at Skid Row down in L.A. How long has Skid Row been in L.A.? Now, again, they should do something about that. They should. But it's that area. Is all of L.A. that? No. And nobody would say that it is. Uh, Kim says the sailors love the Red Jack. I've been, I've been during Fleet Week. Yeah. Uh, it's definitely one of their their prime uh, events that bring in a lot of money. Although, they, you know what was interesting? that uh, we were talking about when I was at the Red Jack with Lori and Mark is that they saw fewer sailors this year. Hmm. And then what happened right after, of course, well, there was the government shutdown. So then fleet yeah. week was like kind of started up really quickly with the blue angels, but also then what happened um, in Israel, right. And like, and all sorts of things. So, or, you know, just kind of prepping, putting ships out or whatever. So mm -hmm. yeah, you don't know what it is, but they definitely noticed fewer, um, fewer military personnel during fleet week. Uh, also, he says the upcoming APEC meeting, San Francisco will be on display. And oh, my God, is it going to be an S show yeah. like the the security perimeter for APEC is insane. And there's no going around it like there is no. Oh, can I just get there? No, 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 no. It is going to be on lockdown. But yeah, San Francisco will be on display and we'll see what happens. Uh, knock on wood. It goes smoothly. Uh, Tony says Musk was able to pay a lot of great minds to build his rockets and space program. I guess he can't pay enough minds to fix Twitter. Or maybe, just maybe, he's not the great business mind we think he is. Maybe, Tony. It's. I don't think that he knows how to run a social media company. I don't think that he actually believes. I, I truly believe this. I don't think that he believes in the safeguards that Twitter used to have. I also don't think, I also think that he does know Twitter isn't financially viable, right? Like, there's too many bots there's not enough people paying for it. So he wants people to pay, but you can't set the bar too high because then everybody will leave. So it's a cluster. It's an absolute cluster. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I just, I don't put too much stock into what Elon Musk says. And yet so many people do. And I just don't think that he has a leg to stand on when it comes to discussing social media and, and where it needs to go. Um, all right, just a few more uh, comments before we go to Jefferson Graham. Susan says, I worked in the Civic Center in the late 80s, and the Tenderloin was terrible then and the same now. My son lives in Alamo Square, and I've never had a problem walking around uh, or parking my car. Exactly. I will have conversations with people like, you can't even go to 7-Eleven without getting your car broken into. And I'm like, I have no problem. Like, people take a news headline, and they make it their reality. And yeah. I understand it does happen. I'm not saying it doesn't. But to say that it's going to happen to you, and then you ask these people, well, when's the last time you went to San Francisco? Oh, I haven't been to San Francisco in years. Okay. Um, maybe you should. You know, maybe you should. And be, like, when we saw Hamilton, Kim, we both discussed, went to see Hamilton, had to step past people that were doing drugs. That is true. An it is true. entire city block of people doing drugs right out in the open air. Right. And the location yeah. is is where it is. Yeah. But at the same time, I'll walk or drive down the Embarcadero or I'll go by the pier or I'll go to the Red Jack Saloon. Gorge. Gorgeous. Right? So mm -hmm. both of these things can be true. It absolutely is. Oh, Doug, thank you so much for the $10 super Yay. sticker. You are so sweet. What thank you. Nice thank thing. you. Thank you. Um, Thanks, I love Doug. when we get those during the show because mm -hmm. it tells me that you guys are enjoying it. And I really it's do very appreciate exciting. it. Yes. Exactly. Uh, if you want to be like Doug, you could just look for the dollar symbol under the live chat box and, and support us that way. All right. Um, Ooh, Maud. Maud's lucky. I'm going to knock on all kinds of wood for you, my sister. Worked in the Tenderloin for 10 years, Maud says, and I've never had any problems parking on the street. And I have a soft top convertible. <laughs> Knocking yeah. on that door. Absolutely. Um, 
I will say this. Um, the one, this is a long time ago. I'm not even going to say maybe 15 years ago, we saw a show in San Francisco and we parked on the street. It was at night. It was a night show. <laughs> My husband, I think we, yeah, I'm pretty sure we were married at the time. He like paid some people that were just like hanging out by the cars, like 10 bucks. And he's like, just make sure nobody breaks into my car. And I was like, they could take your 10 bucks, break into the car and get all of it. But they didn't. I don't know if it actually worked. But uh, Sandy said, I heard I hear similar comments from people who never go to San Francisco. They think the entire city is littered with feces and syringes. Exactly. It's similar. I have a friend that lives in Tahoe and um, all the headlines about how, you know, the Airbnbs, people can't find housing, blah, blah, blah. There's a truth to it. Right. But then yeah. there's also the reality of like, okay, let's bring it down a notch. It's not, it's, we are not our headlines. They are headlines for a reason, but it's not universally true. So, uh, great discussion. Thank you guys. Oh, so much. Um, let's do Jefferson and then we'll do some more headlines with Kim because there is some technology that was on full display earlier this week that Jefferson Graham with photo walk TV is going to tell us about. Hello, my friend. How are Hi. you? I am great. Now, before we do that, how about sometime in November, we're okay. going to meet up in San Francisco and we're going to walk all over the city <laughs> and I we're going to see how bad or good it is because I believe that in many of the best areas, it's nowhere near what the headlines are saying. Thank That's you. Right. Yeah. Thank you. It is gorgeous. I mean, and I go up there only for work. I, I'll admit, I rarely go up there for anything else because it's a drive, but I did go to, to the Red Jack, but it's there are so many times, Jefferson, I, I walk or I'm driving in San Francisco. And I'm like, it's freaking gorgeous. It is so beautiful. And I was like, well, look down at the sidewalk. I do. When I rode my bicycle to see Matthew, my kind of hottie, um, I was <laughs> on a bike. I was driving past people and it was gorgeous. And yes, there's problem areas, but there's good ones too. And you just can't beat that city. I swear. It and is, yeah, it's, it's beautiful. The prettiest, it's the prettiest city in the world. Joe and Joanna tourists who are going to fly to San Francisco ain't going to the Tenderloin. Right. They're not going to City Hall, which apparently there's really bad stuff around there. Yeah. They're going to North Beach and mm -hmm. uh, Chrissy Field and the exactly. Golden Gate Bridge. And I want to go there with you. You know, okay, we're, well, let's we're plan something. We'll, we'll we're going to do something. an episode, right? We're that would be fun. That would be a lot okay. of fun. Uh, okay. Yeah, a walk about San Francisco in the different neighborhoods. And again, I will also say this, just on a side note, not having to do with Jefferson. People that go there and just take pictures of the terrible spots to get clicks on yeah. social media kind of suck, right? It's like, we know yeah. there are problems and you're exploiting people. So I just had to say that. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Also, also, mm -hmm. I want to go to Petaluma when we're done. So there Kim, we go. Kim, I don't want to nah. leave Kim out. Right? We need to eat. Okay. Well, she okay. can come to San Francisco and do the yeah, walkabout can, with us I'll as well. Pop we, up can, into we, the city. Can, yeah. we can even go to Nevada. Oh, <laughs> there we go. I, the places <laughs> I've so never been. Can Nevada. I don't know. I've never been. I've never been to Petaluma and I've never been to Nevada. Come to Petaluma. We'll take care of it. Petaluma is great. Yeah, I've never been. Uh, okay. <laughs> have, you ever, just... have you ever been here? To where? Me? Yes. To Petaluma. Yes. yes. Yeah, have you Many really? Times. Yes. Why, why oh, would you think okay. that Jefferson had never been to Petaluma? Well, because he's a I Southern get California guy. But yeah, but he I does get around. get around. You do. You do. I yeah. yeah. Um, I, uh, the movie theater right in the center of town. That's, yeah. uh, I think it's now a concert hall. It was a, one of my postcards right. at one, one point in my mm -hmm. life. Yes. Ah. Look at that. I, and, I've and never when been. I, when I did the Mendocino photo walk episode, I was all over the all over the place and I came back through Petaluma. Okay. Wow. That's awesome. Well, you didn't see Kim, so what the heck, man? <laughs> I didn't know Kim. At, I didn't know Kim at the time. Jefferson Graham. And there you yeah. go. Photo walk I have a friend named Ant who lives in, in Petaluma, but uh, he was busy at the time. Oh okay. Anthony. Anthony who goes Ant. by Ant. Ant. There you go. Sandy says, I went to Petaluma for the first time about eight years ago. It's a beautiful town. Yes, it is. There you go. Kim loves it. Um, yeah. All right. So let's talk Apple, Jefferson. Yes. So apparently okay. there was a, a new, they introduced new computers on Monday. Uh, the, and now they have this 30 minute presentation. You showed me a couple of these videos. Um, should I show it? Should I show it? To, to well, let, let me let me set it up. Okay, set okay, it up for me. So every time Apple has a new product, they mm -hmm. have this new thing now where they 
basically film an infomercial, right? Uh, and it's it's usually about two hours. In September, it was two hours. This new one was a half an hour. And they spend over a million dollars to produce it. And it's beautiful and it's gorgeous. And they use the highest, highest, highest end cameras and production gear. And, and uh, you know, you just go, wow, I, I have to buy this product. I have right. to get it, yeah. right? So this time, they introduced some new Mac computers very expensive, uh, very expensive, very fast new Mac computers. And they decided they'd have some fun and they made the whole infomercial on an iPhone. Uh, many, many, many iPhones. Many, many and, iPhones. And that sounds great. Okay, it's great. So they did that. But they also used um, all this high-end gear. <coughs> Excuse me, I got uh, well, rice that, cake stuck in my throat. No, that's okay. While you do that, let me say that's not fair. Because if they're telling you it's filmed on an iPhone, but they're Thank using you. all this pricey equipment, that doesn't really give the impression of what you're buying, right? right. right. So show, like show the yeah. viewers. Okay, here is the, the commercial. A little snippet. Yeah, this is yeah. the little trailer that, that they did behind <laughs> the scenes. Here we go. Yeah. Imagine. Good evening and welcome to Apple Park. <laughs> When I heard that we were going to be shooting this Apple event on iPhone, I would, yeah, it was kind of, of course. Apple suggested that they were going to shoot um, the keynote on the iPhone 15 Pro. I thought it was the perfect place to showcase it. I agreed emphatically. All right, here we go. Live. Okay, so I could jump in now. Event. Uh -huh. Okay, so right, right away, you could tell yeah. none of this was done shot on an iphone it was <laughs> shot on on gear that is beyond the be, beyond the scope of any of us we and and do you see the lights did you see all the lights mm -hmm. they had there yeah, we yeah don't exactly have those lights no we, we don't, don't have any of that stuff the only thing we had was a case was it was a um it was a uh uh, what's it called? It's called a cage. Um, this is not the same one, but it's similar. It's from a company called Beast Grip. It sells for about seventy dollars. And the reason we have these things is that we could put lights and microphones and other things, and we could connect them to the iPhone and connect them to the tripod. So I think it was nice what they did, but I don't think it was genuine. Right. And, and they're being a little Kim disingenuous with, with the whole entire it, thing. Like, oh, you could do this. No, we can't do that. No. It almost looked like at one point they set it in a circular tripod thing that had a, a different lens in front of it. Oh, uh, yeah. They put lenses on it. Yep. They, uh, you know, that circular thing would, would give you movement and it mm -hmm. would move things around. I don't own one of those. I don't know about yep. you, Kim, but I don't have one. No. Right. And uh, they also connected an iPhone to a drone. I don't know how they did it because most drones have built in cameras. So they, in some way, they duct strapped, tape. they, st <laughs> yeah, they duct taped <laughs> an iPhone to a drone and just threw it in the air without being able to know where what it's looking at or, yeah. you know because uh you yeah. know i know when i fly my drone i have a viewfinder i actually use the the iphone to see what i'm doing and uh, they couldn't see what they're doing but who cares they had 50 cameras running they actually i believe it was 50 cameras were, were running wow. for this whole thing yeah um they also you also sent me a video and i think i'd seen this one where the olivia rodrigo rodrigo video was shot on an iPhone. I'm going to show you a little bit of the beginning because you can kind of see the devices a little bit. Here is that video. Let's bring that up. There we go. Okay, so like that, we saw kind of the cage thing there right at the yeah. beginning. The cage and a gimbal. And a gimbal, which uh, they they use for motion to uh, to make the motion smoother. Uh, we have gimbals. We have $100 gimbals. This was not a hundred dollar gimbal. <laughs> this was thousands of dollars for their gimbal. Um, the other thing that I need to mention is people always say to me all the time, they say, Jeff, your videos look so great. What do you do? What's the app that you're using to mm, make your video? And right. I always say, well, I use this free app that's on the homepage of the <laughs> iPhone. It's called Camera. It's called the Apple Camera app. <laughs> but in their video, in Apple's video, they did not use their own app. They oh. bypassed their own app for a new one from a company called Black Magic. And I so that was an eye opener to me that they weren't yes. even pushing their own app. They were using a third party app. What you can do on that third party app is it gives you white balance control, it gives you exposure mm -hmm. control, and it gives you audio meters and other professional things. And uh, I, I'm going to be spending more time with the Black Magic app checking it out. 
So why do you think, given the, I mean, do you think that the average person looked at those Apple ads and trailers and was like, I can really truly do that? Or is it just, you can, but it's just kind of cool to get, like, what is, what do you think the motivation is for Apple, Apple for putting these sorts of things out to fool people? To sell computers well, and to sell mm -hmm. fast, high end, very expensive computers that work in conjunction with the latest technology. So, uh, you know, you can have some fun here. The entry level computer from Apple is a thousand dollars. Okay, great. But the new ones they introduced, the entry levels are, I think, fourteen hundred and sixteen hundred dollars. That's where they start. Wow. And if you have fun on the uh, Apple cart and you keep adding everything, you can get them up to six, seven, eight thousand dollars. Yeah, no, and I have an, I have a MacBook, but this one's pretty old, and I use old in quotes because it's a few years old. But um, I, as I know, as I know, you like to use old gear. Yes. I do. Well, <laughs> you know, I paid a pretty penny for it. It better last a little bit. Um, yeah, I mean, but this does what I need to do. Um, I I probably should take you know pictures and videos and stuff and put them on my hard drive more often and things like that. But other than that, it does what I need to do. I'm not making movies though. So if you're in the movie film photo business, is it worth it? I had to upgrade my computer. That was uh, last year. Uh, so uh, what, no, it's 2021. I upgraded okay. my computer at that point when I left USA Today and they took my computer away and I had to go out and buy one. Do you know that experience, Nikki? <laughs> It's very expensive. <laughs> Do you know that experience? So I spent $2,000 for the new computer, uh, which had the the faster M1 chip. The okay. M1 chip is now a baby, and they want you to get the M3. I saw a huge difference in the M1. Again, I, I produce photo walks. I do all the editing right. on my computer. So I've, I'm running a lot of stuff. I needed that upgrade, and I appreciated it. And... Uh, you know, I think the movie True Grit was was edited on uh, not on an iPhone, but it was it was done on a MacBook Pro with the uh, Final Cut. So when you're doing really graphic heavy things, you need the extra power. So I think it was a, just a statement because Apple could do it. You know, they could either get the hundred thousand dollar camera or show off right. what they could do with the iPhone. Why not? Uh, you know, they've got the budget to make the ultimate thirty. Who else has is doing thirty minute commercials, right? That's true. Now, what about how they compare to other, I don't know, computers that are not Apple products? It's if you if someone came to you and was like, Jefferson, I need a new computer. Would you recommend Apple or would you recommend something else that might be cheaper? I, I would say I'm not familiar with Windows computers at this part of my life. Okay. I am familiar with Apple computers and I would get the Mac Air for $1,000 if you could. But it also always depends on what are you doing. Now, Nikki, you're going to say to me, well, you know, I just read my email and I just surf the net. And I go, oh, yeah. And you're running your podcast yes. every day yeah. on, your, on your computer. Right. And it's really vitally important. If you don't have that computer operating correctly, no show. No show. Exactly. No show. So, yes. so I mean, I, I'm, I'm in the ecosystem. It will take a lot. I don't even know what it would take for me to leave Apple products just because my phone, my computer, I'm just like in that ecosystem. And I like the interface. So, you know, I don't know a lot about Windows. I have a, the Google Chromebook is the, the only thing that I really have experience with. And it can't even do anything, really. So no, no. Um, I'm sticking with it, Apple. I'm just I'm sticking it, with my old Apple. Yeah, the Chromebook works if you could download the right program for it. Good luck getting StreamYard on there. Oh, yeah. Because uh, I, I don't think you can. I, yeah, I don't know. I could be wrong. But there's so much, so many things you can't do on a Chromebook. I would not recommend it to anybody mm -hmm. unless somebody's going to give you a $200 Chromebook and say, okay, I'll play around with it. Yeah. Windows computers are going to be cheaper. But once you get the necessary power you need, you're still looking at at least $1,000. Yeah. But on the other side of the coin, if I got the computer that I paid $2,000 for uh, in 2021, if I bought it today, it's probably going to be $3,500. Wow. Jeez. Jeez. But I use it all day long. That's I the know. other thing. It's I like you, it's like it. how I justify spending a lot on a mattress, right? Like if you're on it a lot, if you mm -hmm. break it down by day and time, it's it's probably worth it. Uh, yeah. I keep trying to talk my parents into getting a new computer because they really are email people. They don't do anything, but their computer sucks. It's so slow. I'm like, you need a new computer but they're so expensive getting something new is so it's a it's yeah, yeah maybe like okay. for what they're doing it's fine for them okay oh. now first of all i use my computer more than i use my mattress so there <laughs> there you go definitely <laughs> let's get a whole bunch of super stickers 
for Nikki's parents. There you Let's go. Let's buy them a Mac Air. <laughs> Let's get a them the A lot of super level, stickers. The uh, entry level Mac Air for nine ninety nine. See, now you keep mentioning the Mac Air. Um, I got the Mac Book just because of like the memory and everything. Like you like the Mac Air. For your parents, if yeah. you're going to give me the old, well, I really don't do anything. They yeah. just they just do email. Then I'm going to say get the Mac Air. Okay, yeah. And, but that's I, I actually be, I believe you that they just they just do email. It's photos and email. That's all they do. I it's, have a feeling they watch a certain YouTube show. Also, <laughs> is that possible? You know, I will say this: they probably watch. They probably watch me on their phone. They go to the gym yeah. and they watch the. They listen to the show on their phone. So, and they always have the latest phone. Believe me, my parents, my mother specifically, who never answers the phone, always needs the latest iPhone for some godforsaken reason. Okay, so, so when you want to talk to your mother, you text her first and say, "Hey, mom, you're around." <laughs> I, May no, I call what, you. You want to know what I really do? I call my dad and I say, "Give the phone." to mom please because he always answers my mother never answers but she always That's wants funny. the latest okay phone. well our, our son does the same thing he called the other night and he says why isn't mom answering i said because <laughs> we're sitting at dinner that's why <laughs> oh yeah so i just go hand the phone to mom and he goes your daughter wants to speak to you uh jefferson graham photo walks tv thank you so much for coming on i love I it um look, quick little plug for this yes, weekend please. i got a really good one for saturday Ooh, okay. uh, today is thursday i have been doing a time lapse of manhattan beach my idyllic southern california beach community <laughs> uh non-stop since I, I think i'm on my uh, 11th day and wow. i'm going to conclude it tomorrow i've had two cameras running non-stop through sunrises and sunsets through overcast days that oh, turn into beautiful. sunny days wait um, do you just leave them down there and no one steals them uh great great question i have a friend <laughs> believe it or not that lives at the beach i had Very this nice. idea i said i want to put my camera on your deck and he goes, well, I got great news for you. My neighbor who lives on the second story, she's out of town for two weeks. Perfect. Let's put the camera up there. Nice. Yeah. So I've had two cameras running. And I and for a while, I was going there every day just to make sure they were still running. And they were. And uh, tonight, I'm going to do an intro on how I did the whole thing. And then tomorrow, I'm going to edit it and put music on it. It's some really good footage. Uh, oh, my wife awesome. asked me about it. She said, what do, you, what do you think? And I said, frankly, it was orgasmic. That's how good the footage Oh, is. wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. We have a question for you, Jefferson, from Phineas. Yes. Have you ever eaten at Mam Dies? Uh, no, the, the, what, what they're asking, mm -hmm. have I ever eaten at Mama D's? Oh, Mama, okay. D's. Mama D's. Mama D's. Yes, I have. I ate at the one that was on Manhattan Avenue. Uh, until they had to move and then they've eaten at the one that's on Sepulveda as well and it's fantastic. what kind of food is it would oh come on mama d's hmm italian okay oh, i would not have guessed italian i was thinking like a uh, fried chicken Diner. or something yeah, yeah i was thinking that sorry okay mama no, i'm d's. sorry yeah I, I wish we had a fried chicken <laughs> restaurant in manhattan beach but we don't oh there's there's a hole in the business that somebody needs to fill right well there. when we go to san francisco i think we're going out for italian food though because oh, okay. uh, because I love North Beach, don't you? Yes, I love yeah. North Beach very much. So I think we just had pizza there uh, not too long ago. I forget the name At of Tony's? the place. But... At Tony's. I don't remember Tony? the name of it. I don't remember the name of it. But it, it, we had like a cheese pizza, and it was like this thick. Mm. And it was cheesy uh -huh. and saucy. It was really really good. I forget the name of Golden it. Boy? Golden Boy. Golden Boy. You could put a gun to my head, and I would not know the name of the place. I literally walked okay. in after a couple drinks, Jeff. Can I can I give you one piece of trivia that you never knew Please. about me that I think you'll find interesting? When I was uh, just about to turn twenty, I owned a used record store in North Beach mm, for two really? and a half years. Really? Mm -hmm. Cool. What was yep. it called? Recycled Records. Recycled Records. All right. How long did you own it? Two and a half years. Okay. That's but then I decided I didn't want to be behind the cash register any longer. I wanted to go out Take and see pictures. the world. There yeah. you go. And a great, because you do it so, so very well, Jefferson. Okay. So the time lapse is going to be Saturday, correct? That yes. You're gonna, yes, it will the be. The orgasmic time Orgasmic. Lapse. Is that a Manhattan title? Manhattan Beach. Uh, anyway, should that be my thumbnail? Yes. Orgasmic yes. Man Manhattan Beach? Yep. Yes. Yes, that is mm -hmm. absolutely. I mean, I, that would I, get me to click. I'm just that saying. That would get me to click. Absolutely. Uh -huh. All right. Orgasmic. So don't miss that. Okay. It's Photo Walk click. TV. <laughs> <laughs> you want to have an orgasm on Manhattan Beach, Photo Walks? There you go. There you go. Uh, that's on Saturday. Check him out, Photo Walks TV on YouTube. Jefferson Graham, we will talk to you next week. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye. That's really, yeah. Orgasmic Manhattan. I, that just has to be really cool. I love mm. time lapse photos.
I think it's really, really awesome. Well, to what just a perfect see. thing to have yes. a vacant apartment. No one's messing with your stuff for two mm-hmm. weeks. No one's going to rip it off because you can't just leave a camera down there. You'd have to have a special spot for it. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. It's also cool to have a friend that lives right on the beach. I'm very jealous of that person living <laughs> right on the beach. We have a colleague yeah. that lives in Santa Cruz. Uh, and I'm always jealous every time she... uh uh jennifer lives jennifer, on yeah yeah she lives in she still does live in santa cruz and every time mm-hmm. she posts photos i'm like see i love i love the beach and i love california yeah. uh, all right let's do some headlines and when we come back uh we're just gonna have a bitch fest about what's going to happen what is is going to happen to our pg e bills well, uh, i love me a good bitch fest we might even have that during the news how about that uh, very good because uh, and we already knew this because loretta lynch uh, we love her to death she came mm-hmm. on last week she told us that this was coming she told us the reasons why uh but there is an effort i was screaming kim at my tv screen screaming like we need to do something about it but no matter how loudly politicians yell and scream those rates are still going to go up. So we'll we'll bitch and moan about it right after Kim's news. Mm-hmm. Now, from around the world to up your street, the Nikki Maduro Show presents News Czar Kim McAllister. Let's start in the Middle East this time around uh, because there are about 400 Americans that have now been approved to leave the Gaza Strip through the border crossing with Egypt. They could leave sometime today. At least 300 foreign citizens were able to leave yesterday as Israeli airstrikes continued in that region. The deal has been made with Egypt that at 500 people per day will be allowed to leave. And again, 400 Americans have been approved for exit. There's a pair of congressmen from neighboring border states asking for more cash to help first responders that are tasked with handling a surge of uh, immigrants that with that are undocumented. Ruben Gallego, who's an Arizona Democrat, is teaming up with Michael McCall, a Texas Republican. They've shot out a letter to the head of the House Appropriations Committee laying out the burden local police and fire departments are facing, and they say they need more money for these first responders who have to deal with this. The House is expected to vote today on a Republican-led bill to provide aid to Israel by cutting IRS funding. Now, the bill is unlikely to become law due to opposition from Democrats and some Republicans who would like to include aid for Ukraine as well. President Biden is also threatening to veto this bill. It's because uh, Speaker Mike Johnson's trying to slash the uh, the bill in half, right? Separate it. So funding for Israel on this side, funding for Ukraine on this side, and not all together. So yeah, and they don't mm-hmm. like. I don't know what it is. I'm, I'm like, why don't Republicans like? ramping up funding for the IRS. What could the reason possibly be? Mm -hmm. And what I think is they're being obviously lobbied by people who love the fact that the IRS isn't going after uh, tax cheats, uh, people that are, you know, exploiting tax laws, all sorts of things. I mean, that's just my assumption. But, you know, I don't see why anybody wouldn't want to make the IRS the, the people that get the tax money to pay for all the things that we want to pay for, why we want to uh, fund them any more than, um, than we already do. I just don't get it. Um, one of the five former Memphis police officers involved in the death of Tyree Nichols will plead guilty. This is uh, Tyree Nichols featured here. An attorney for Desmond Mills Jr. says he'll be changing his not guilty plea to guilty in a hearing today. Nichols died in January, days after a traffic stop where officers were seen kicking, punching and hitting him with a baton. To the power now. Mm-hmm. Ugh. Millions of Californians will have to wait longer to find out about their electric bills. Former San Jose Mayor Sam Licardo is with Fair California. He says this coalition wants PG&E's rate hike to be turned down altogether Mm -hmm. after seeing campaigns from the company. Here's some sound from former Mayor Licardo. Transparency around where PG&E is getting the money to pay for these TV commercials, for the lobbying, the political contributions, all the other spending that's happening here. We want to make sure it's not coming from ratepayers. Sorry about the uh, volume there. He was uh, talking about, yes, the, the all the commercials that PG&E is, is pushing. Where does mm-hmm. the money for those come exactly. from? Exactly. Right? There needs to be better oversight, <laughs> and the CPUC mm-hmm. is just not doing it. 
A rate hike vote was supposed to happen today. It has been pushed back two weeks now to November 16th. pg e is asking state regulators to raise prices again somewhere between $25 to $31 every month more come January. More. And the ridiculous. utility serves about 16 million people, says the increase is necessary to cover the cost of new underground power lines in areas at the highest risk of fire. Here's an idea. Instead of making your rate payers cough up the cash for all the fines that you've incurred for mm-hmm. killing Californians by not maintaining your lines and thinking about these things ahead of time, why don't you let the shareholders foot some of the bill. How exactly. about that? Exactly. They just get less payouts. If you want to invest in PG&E, you take the ups and the downs, mofos. Like, I'm sorry. It's just <laughs> pisses me off to no end. Uh, recall Toyota oh. more than a more than a million vehicles on Wednesday the company announced a certain a recall of certain RAV4s model years 2013 to 2018 Toyota says there's an issue with the car's replacement batteries which can actually shift and spark a fire oh, the shoot. company says it's working on a solution here but if you have a RAV4 from model a year 2013 to 2018 check that recall because that could be a little dangerous there that's yeah and those are mm-hmm. old obviously older cars so mm-hmm. you've had it for a while so usually you know <laughs> you're probably not thinking about it but yeah get that get that fix sag after things are moving Hello. and shake and finally negotiators will be back at the bargaining table today trying to end the hollywood actor strike Talks between the Actors Union and the major studios continued into last night. The sources from both SAG-AFTRA and the Producers Alliance say the talks are headed in the right direction and that a tentative deal could be reached within a week. Oh, good. Mm. I'm so, I, I you know, my, the selfish part of me. Well, on one hand, so many people and auxiliary, like the the staff and the food caterers and all that kind of stuff, right, are, that are impacted by the mm-hmm. halt in, in all these productions, but also... There's going to be quite a lag in good stuff to watch, right? Because they they can't immediately. There were stories about movies not being made, obviously TV shows being put off for seasons. Um, So, yeah, I mean, I like my TV and my movies and everything like that. I want them to start working again. Bring back the movies. Yeah, but stand firm for what you want. Yes, exactly. Like, no, they need a good deal. Absolutely. You get your money. You you make sure they don't suck in your image with AI and spit out no paycheck in return, right? Exactly. Exactly. Uh, this story makes me think of you because I know you like the I roller know, coaster. I know. I had it in the rundown too. Okay, good. I know good, good, you good. love it. So I had it in there. I'm like, here's the link. I got to make sure to do the story. Six Flags and Cedar Fair are merging to create a powerhouse theme park company. Mm-hmm. Together, the company controls 27 amusement parks and more than 15 water parks in North America. The new company will keep the name Six Flags, but trade under the Cedar Fair stalker tick, which is fun, F-U-N. Oh, how funny. <laughs> well, so I am part of, not surprising, I am part of a Magic Mountain like uh, fan group or whatever on Facebook. Sure. And so when I saw this news yesterday, I went to the, the page and I just posted it. I'm like, what are you guys' thoughts? Like, because um, I don't know how many of you people follow Magic Mountain, but Magic Mountain has, I hadn't, I haven't gone this year simply because one, I didn't have the money or the time to go, mm-hmm. but also because I keep from this group seeing ride closures, things down for maintenance. And if I'm going to go down there and I usually only go one time a year, usually around my birthday, I don't want to go and like half the rides aren't working or and some people are like you know the garbage cans are overflowing it's not taking care of it there's other six flags that are being run better uh some of the responses most people didn't know uh whether they liked it or not but others were saying that cedar point runs their parks better than hmm. six flags does so it makes me wonder even though the six flags name is slapped on it mm-hmm. if cedar fair is kind of behind the scenes you know maybe it'll be run a little bit better uh, but runs- remember, I mean, we're going to lose a uh, great American, what, eight or nine years or something. I was going to say, who so, runs great America? So that's California's great America. It's, I don't believe it's six flat. I don't, uh, I don't know, but I want someone to take it over uh, because so I don't want to lose it. A, we've got a six flags in Vallejo. Mm-hmm. Oh, it is Cedar Fair. It's operated by Cedar Fair. Oh, Cedar Fair. Okay. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, on news of this merger, the stocks for both companies were up. Yeah, Yesterday. they just, mm-hmm. I mean, Six Flags, I really like it. I've never been to Discovery Kingdom, but I've only gone to Magic Mountain and I love it. I love, love, love it. But they have to get their 
maintenance and everything together or it's not worth it because it's expensive. Mm -hmm. And yeah, Cedar Fair runs Great America. But they're supposedly we, closing We it, don't so. go to Six Flags because the one in Vallejo, they had orca whales and dolphins right, yeah, in yeah, captivity. Yeah. You know how I feel about that. I do. I know. Yeah. Um, Beatles. Mm-hmm. Beatles, Beatles, Beatles. The very Beatles. last Beatles song is out now, and it's thanks to AI. We talked about this what? the other day before it was okay. released, and now here it comes. The song is called Now and Then. Now and it Then. It was written and sung by John Lennon decades ago, and newly developed AI technology allowed every Beatle to contribute to the finished song. So it includes guitar parts recorded by George Harrison before he died, okay. Ringo Starr's drumming, and Paul McCartney's bass and piano. And of course, uh, John Lennon singing. And so this is what's being called the very last Beatles song, Now and Then. And it's now out and you can listen to it. Okay, so. I'm going to play a little bit because I already kind of screwed up with the Olivia Rodrigo thing. So we yeah, go we're already going to get dinged. So we're all going to well. get dinged. So let's mm -hmm. just play a little bit of it. Hold on, I got it up. And I don't know how many of you guys are Beatles, Beatles fans, but mm, let's see. Okay, here we go. Documentary. <laughs> Where's the song? Give me the song. I want the song. Oh, are they talking about AI? Weekly thinking oh, on boring. the stands for the music. Here, them working together. Get to the good stuff. Oh, oh damn it. Wrong. I'll try to find it. I can't find it right now. That sucks. But, but it's um, going to be good. It's going to be really good. Um, let's song. I just want the song. I want to hear I it. I want to hear it too. And now we're going to get dinged for that. And we didn't even get the, the juice. Well, that is, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Hold on. The, the ad has to play first. So oh, that's all right. Okay. So we might as just, well just listen to it well, since we're, well, let me, t let me tell you this story while you're um, listening to the ad, right? Okay. Uh, this is, if you're not a tipper, you're not <laughs> going to get your DoorDash order in any, uh, any way on time. Yes. I heard all about right? this. Be prepared for a slow DoorDash delivery. The in-app message is being sent. The San Francisco-based company sending to customers who don't tip. Drivers can pick and choose the orders they want to pick up. They often go for the higher paying ones. So of if you put in an order and you didn't tip your DoorDash driver or you were a shady little tipper, then you can expect that yours is going to be at the bottom of the barrel, right? Well, that makes total sense to me. Yes. Like, I don't know. Okay, so I tip. You guys know that I tip. And mm -hmm. I also tip more if it's farther away versus closer. Um, but I've been really trying, you guys, to not use DoorDash as much because it just – sometimes you're paying more for the tax, delivery, and everything than the actual thing that you had. So, it's But, true. yeah, if if you're a DoorDasher and there's one that has a tip on it and one that doesn't, what do you think is going to happen? That's obvious. The other day, my husband, my kids were dying for sushi. They're very loving. That's their favorite food, sushi mm. in this house. And so they, um, my husband ordered some sushi okay. and he said, it's $30 if, if I have it delivered, 30 extra dollars. And if I go pick it up, it's free. So I'm going to pick it up. Yes. I'm like, okay. That's what matters. And it's, <laughs> especially it. if it's close by. Like yeah. my husband is the worst. He'll get DoorDash. And I'm like, that is like a mile away. Go get right. it. Go get like, it. don't yeah. be that. They've made us so lazy. Lazy And believe bones. me, I get it. But it's like, it's not hard. To walk in there. And I get no. it. It's really nice to be snuggled, especially because it's cold and you have your blanket and you're comfy right. and da, 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 da. But you got to get up to get it out the door anyway. So to walk your ass out there and freaking go to the car and pick it up yourself. So. All, All right. right. Are we is ready to over? Let's get yes, it. Yeah, it is over. Okay. Here we go. This is the Now and Then song. The last Beatles song. Thanks to AI. I was like John it. Lennon. Is that who was yeah. singing it? Yeah. You know, when you hear his voice it's yeah. singing a song you've never heard before, yeah, it's... it almost feels like he's speaking to you from beyond. Speaking yeah. of ghosts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Spencer's not a fan. <laughs> no, the song sucks. I thought it was kind of good. You know, it reminds me of a song that I sing to my daughter 
all the time. Though you know, they each had their own song that I sang to them at night before bed. Right. And hers is Julia by the Beatles. Aww, I don't that's know if you've cute. ever heard that song, but it kind of has that same right. ballady feeling to it. Yeah. I like I like it. I like it. And Jim, it. I don't think I'm we're sorry. gonna get demonetized. What's gonna happen is I'm gonna have to pull that. So you guys are lucky that you're watching it live, yeah. but on the replay, gonna have I'm to just cut. gonna have to pull that out. Yeah. <laughs> So like we're uh, going to have to cut Olivia and Rodrigo too. Exactly. We're just going to pull that right out. It's going to be a skip of the jump. To, <laughs> this is explaining it. I played the now and then Beatles song. Go listen to it yourself. So there you it go. It doesn't look the same <laughs> as it did when you did it live. Nope. No, it doesn't. It mm -mm. does not. Uh, so that's just what I have to do. But it's okay. okay. So let me do one more story for you because this is interesting and I want okay. your take on it. Uh -huh. Especially given our history with sports betting. All okay. right. Yes. Oh my God. I totally thought of you. There is a new push to bring legal sports gambling to California. Yeah. Two men have introduced initiatives they hope to get on the ballot. It would allow Native American tribes to offer sports betting at casinos or through an app. But the state's Nations Indian Gaming Association says it's not on board nope. and wasn't involved in the plan. Experts don't think the measures will be left up to voters since they were submitted too late for approval. But this whole bringing sports gambling to California, it seems to me like it's just a matter of time. No, I really don't know because, okay, it, it was so funny. I was listening to the news about this story and they're like, we don't know who's behind it, but many people suspect it's the gaming. No crap, it's the mm -hmm. gaming industry. They were bummed probably that the ballot measures went down last time. Mm -hmm. Um I think this is a way around it, right? I mean, obviously using uh, the tribes, but do we need it? I don't know. Do we need game? And I know that we're kind of, against this whole thing since it destroyed obviously <laughs> kgo that's what it is now it's an am radio station that deals with online betting who thought up that idea um but still sports betting you don't you can just go online i don't understand why we need to have like brick and mortar right. areas to do stuff like that i don't get it um, money, but we'll money. Say, we'll the say, native the native american casinos would make a lot of money if they were right. allowed to but do they're not behind sport, this bill book. right so they didn't they weren't consulted so they do they want it are they gonna have control over it are that. they gonna set the rules i don't know i mean who are these two men and what is you know who are they being paid by and i don't know they're the people behind know. the town in sonoma county no i'm just kidding mm -hmm. i have no idea I don't know. um <laughs> So that's Solano County, but yeah. Oh, Solano County. Thank mm -hmm. you. Uh, yeah. yeah. Don't, don't bring know. my county into that. Don't, don't. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> so that story, we haven't even really touched on that story, but like all the now stories coming out, mm -hmm. we were strong armed into giving up land to create this yeah. town. It's like, oh my God. It sounds like Yellowstone. I don't know. Like, I don't it know. It does. <laughs> right? Doesn't it? I'm it like, sounds mm. like, yeah, like politics. There's going to be a movie made. It's something. Something's going on. I don't we know if it's a land. good thing or a bad thing. Uh, I don't know. It's also one of those stories where what do they know that we don't know? Doesn't that, like, if you're doing this secretive and quickly and strong arming people and all that kind of stuff, like they they know something about this area. Like, is there yeah. like, is there gold or oil or something? Like, yeah, the, why so are the, you so desperate for this area? So the story is in this Solano County uh, area, right near Travis Airfield, right uh, Air Force Base, that this kind of it was for a while a secret conglomerate bought up all this land, and now we have found out who they are and they're all like it's big tech money yeah i think I uh know. lorena lorraine jobs is is one of the people investing in this place but uh they've bought up all this land and they spent billions of dollars to do it and now there's lawsuits being filed right people say they've been strong-armed mm -hmm. that they were kind of coerced into selling and one of the reports is that there i think there were i want to say um, you know, when the land is passed to generations, yes. there can be eight members of a family that exactly. own a certain ranch, right? Uh -huh. Well, one member wanted to sell and sold to these people. And because and the, other ones didn't. the other ones didn't want to sell, but because they got a foot in with that one person who wanted to sell, then allegedly they went on a tear to coerce and sue and do whatever they could do to get the other people to sell as well. Yeah. And so there's been a lot of ugliness in trying to get this land. And this is not what the, what is the company? I forget what the name of it is that, that one California, one free something, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. What they, this is not what they want. They're trying to build up goodwill. 
Yeah. Because they want to get public approval for this new city they want to build. But it could also just mm. be the facade, right? It could be like, yeah. oh, I don't want all my secrets of how I got to this point exposed, but they are being exposed. And again, why are you so desperate for the land there? You know, like what mm. makes that area so... Now I understand Northern California. I'm not... It's not you know, absurd to think that you want to build a town or a city there, but why this area, why the strong arm tactics, why so much money? What is the plan? And those, you know, details, I just don't think are, yeah. are exposed enough and they need to be because there's a plan and we're just not being made well aware of it. So it's called California forever. My bad. There you go. No. There you go. What I say? One California. Yeah. yeah California forever. California forever. Me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the way you do things. I'm going to build my own city. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Is this going to be like a Jefferson kind of offshoot? Like, who the hell knows what's going to happen? But um, yeah, it doesn't seem that this is for totally altruistic reasons. There's something that's going to make people a lot of money, and that's why they're spending a lot of money. So there you go. All right. Is that it? Yeah. Okay, that's Kim McAllister. This is the Nikki yeah. Medoro show. <laughs> that's right. Uh, this was well, kind of a weird ending. Sorry. Uh, let me just rewrap it and say that this show is crowdfunded and we it do is. appreciate all the ways you contribute. Please find us at the Nikki Medoro show.com, Patreon, PayPal link rolled out there for you. Also, the link to the podcast mm -hmm. and the Nikki Medoro merchandise. It's not only the Patreon link, you got a lot going on there. The Nikki Medoro show.com. And yes, indeed, I'm Kim McAllister on the Nikki Medoro show. Thank you, Kim. Yeah. And I'll just also add this uh, just talking about the, the this town that they want to build up there. Yeah. You're going to need PG&E power as well, right? Mm -hmm. I just... No, they they might not. They were going to have their own energy company. They Fabulous. have their own water system, their own power, their own everything. See, it's something that doesn't... Yeah. They don't need every... And they don't... They're not part of society. They're their own enclave. I don't like it. I don't With, like it. I don't like it. There will be gates and to keep the riffraff out. Yeah. They're just going to have their own little cult commune, whatever the hell you're going to call it. It's just rich people. They're like, you know, I want to be rich and live in California, but I don't want to deal with all the other people no. out there. And I sure as hell probably don't want to deal with PG&E. So as Kim had mentioned in her news, Sam Licardo was speaking. I'm going to play you a little bit of a news report because the sound was a little low. So let's hope and pray. Sorry that this about one, that. No, yeah. but hopefully mine's louder. Uh, but yeah, they're 40 bucks more a month, at least, at least. Um, and what was yeah. the story we had recently where we're already over the last however many years? 10 years, we're up like almost 100%. Almost it's not like 90% we're paying more. And we are paying more in for power than any other state in, in the country. Exactly. Okay, so no we all, we're it. already at the high end. And now you want to tack another 40 bucks a month on? No, thank I'm you. I'm telling you. At least, though, they always say that average, average, average my ass. Mine always seems to go up like 100 bucks, it seems like. Uh, but this is a report with some... Now, again, you guys tell me, Kim did in her news that it's been pushed back for two weeks. So this might have been a little bit earlier before that announcement, but we'll see. Um, but really, let's put our money, let's gamble on whether or not this rate increase is not going to be approved. Fair California state admission is to enhance rate and safety accountability for customers of all for-profit utilities, most especially PG&E. What do we want? Yes, when do we want them? Now! Over the past three years, Bay Area residents have suffered from very high inflation. But during that same time, our PG&E bills have skyrocketed at three times that very high rate of inflation. And now this company wants more. PG&E is asking for a general rate case increase of 26% of the rates we're paying. $80 a month increase since the beginning of this year. And the CPUC and the CPUC is ready to add another $40 a month on top of that. PG&E has already filed numerous other rate requests at the CPUC and hopes they will be granted next year. They spent millions of dollars on lobbyists. They have dished out big pay and compensation packages for their executives. So, and you guys get it. It's just, it's total, 
total BS. And they're going to keep asking for these rate increases. And what I love, I love the fact that they try to sell us of, we understand just what how Kim had mentioned that people are paying the most that they have paid and that we're the highest, you know, in the nation. Um, but they try to sell us on the fact that we need to do this for our own safety. This is what I say to PG and E, we should not have to pay for your lack of action earlier on in making the system safe. It's not our fault. It's your fault. And you are, and all these lawsuits are like, it's not supposed to go to the rate payer. It's not supposed to go to the rate payer. Mm -hmm. Of course it's going to go to us because they're not taking it out of their shareholders' pockets. No. God forbid the shareholders. No, pay they're not at all. taking it away from the executive bonuses either. And they're not taking it away from the CEO riding around on a private jet from place to place to place. So yeah. you want me to pay an extra $40 a month when I'm already facing exorbitant rates so that, and you're not doing any belt tightening on your end? forget you exactly. and in addition we should be able to have our underground lines because mm -hmm. it's your fault you've made money hand over fist for decades and it's time to pay up pg and e yep. exactly i mean and i don't know the answer to this i mean eric says it needs to be turned into a public utility that's not going to happen you know anytime soon mm -hmm. um and i understand randy your point it's not pg and e's fault it's the fault of the cpuc they're one and the same that's the problem. And I will also say it's Jerry Brown. It's Governor Newsom. It's so many people that allowed this nonsense to continue and allow a utility company as large and a, a, a basic monopoly for most of California mm -hmm. on our energy and gas to not have proper oversight. It's just, it's criminal. It's, it's a, absolutely it's a, criminal. It's also a joke. It's a, the CPUC is a joke. Yeah, it's it's absolutely ridiculous. Um, now, Fair California, go to fairca.org, right? And you can let people know that you're against all of this. And I don't mean to say it in the sarcastic tone. It ain't going to do crap. They don't care. It's not going to do, I mean, yes, we need to continue to do it. I signed, mm -hmm. uh, you should do it as, we as well, fairca.org. Do it right? Be that squeaky wheel that Loretta Lynch advised yeah. to do last week and all those sorts of things. But the truth of the matter is until like what Eric says, un un until, you know, you get, unless you get uh, PG and E uh, as a public entity, break it up, do something. Um, it's, it's all going to stay the same. And it's so frustrating because they have us, they, they literally between reducing the incentives to go solar to not even having the option to go solar in many cases, um, we're stuck. Aussie says the CPUC executives later get hired by PG&E. Exactly. PG&E, Katie writes, has been fined millions for wildfires. You know where they're going to get the money. Exactly. I mean, I feel like there should be a cut in executive pay. There should be no bonuses. There should be nothing, right. nothing, unless this is taken care of first. And Ren, you're absolutely right. Money in the governor's election campaign. Governor Newsom has blood on his hands. He has a, a, a Californian debt on the on his hands. And I'm a Newsom supporter. I mm -hmm. really do. It pisses me off to no end that he has failed yep. so badly in regulating he, this. He should have had our backs on this. He should he, have and had he doesn't. California. And he, he doesn't. Ab, I mean, but uh, I support him in so many other issues exactly, and matters. But it sucks. You want to love the guy, but I'm telling you, when you get to this, I just see red. I see red too. And I want, you know, I'm not a reporter anymore, but I want, you know, if he ever has the audacity to stand before reporters and say, oh, I'm going to fight price gouging within the oil company and I'm here for the, ask him about pg &E. Ask him why our rates are going up. Ask him why he's not holding their feet to the fire. Why he isn't doing a press conference every other friggin' day about that. Mm -hmm. Because this is a bill that comes into our households every single day month and we have literally no control over it because they get to raise our rates they go through the machinations as if oh we're gonna ask the cpuc you're not asking anyone you're looking in the mirror and being like should we ask them should we get more money from our rate payers? they're like yep we should do that there's no oversight there's nobody on our side i would love to see and you know, maybe a pig will fly in the sky and they're gonna say yeah no you don't get to raise the rates but why i doubt don't that's they gonna happen. take all the money that they've put on the ads and why don't they take all the money that they um, give to politicians and use that to underground the lines? Yeah. And let's let's have a, a moratorium on PG&E giving money to politicians. How about that? 
no money to politicians. And I'm sorry. And I understand if you have stock in PG&E, you don't want to hear this, but you know, you go up and you go down with the company. And I'm, I'm sorry the the payouts to shareholders should be hit because of what they've done wrong as a company. Right. I'm sorry. It's like, as, it's as if there is no consequence for killing people. We're burning entire town town down because you didn't do the things you were supposed to do a long ass time ago. And couldn't even keep track of your records to figure yeah. out where you went wrong. Exactly. Uh, Eric says PG&E is actively working against solar and other green yes. energy. If Puts I had business. the money, I would love to go off grid and yep. have all the solar panels on my house and, and maintain my own battery and my own energy just to turn around and flip off PG&E. Yep. Absolutely. Would I would love it. Love it. And got, they mm. are working with every ounce of their being to stop it from happening. I mean, they can't stop it completely, but they can make it so it's so unaffordable so that yeah. it doesn't, you know, for people that are just kind of hemming and hawing about it, they, they could do that. And it sucks. Here's why PG&E just isn't another business, Doug. It's because, as Nikki loves to say, and I, I know it's a crude analogy, they have us by, as you say, Nikki, the short and curlies. They do! Yes. And this is because if I want power at my house... I, you know, and I don't have the money for solar panels. Right. Then or I have no choice. Pack or there whatever. Is yes. Exactly. No choice but to sign up with PG&E. And so it's not just another business because I have no option, uh, option except to participate, right? And pay these exorbitant rates. Uh, Calvin says PG&E got away with mass murder. Screw them to hell. Yep, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And I don't understand how you can kill so many people, destroy so many towns so often. San Bruno. Often. Paradise. Blow up the town. I mean, it's... And then they, they could still what give the big paychecks? No. The, is, are they the first company to be charged with a criminal murder? Or or was it criminal charges? I have, I, I don't know the, the, the facts mm. definitely on that. But they did kill people because of what they did wrong. They did. And it's it's criminal. And you should not be able to, to profit off of death and destruction like that. You just shouldn't. And then look at us and be like, sorry, we're going to have to raise your rates. Mm -hmm. Screw you. Yeah. Walnut Creek says, and to think Tesla thought electricity should be free for all. Yeah. <laughs> I understand it's a, I understand the business aspect of it. It costs money to maintain lines. I also understand this. I understand that the more people go solar and go to battery packs, the more expensive it is for PG&E because that's fewer people paying for the lines that they need. I'm also not crying about it. You should be preparing for a transition. You should under like just as we need to accept certain things, PG&E mm -hmm. needs to accept certain things. And if they go bankrupt and we have to figure it out on our own as a city, honestly, I'm ready because this isn't sustainable. It is not financially sustainable for people to live this way. It's we can't afford it. We can't afford rates keep, to keep going up as much as they have been in recent years. I don't understand how they could possibly think, oh, sorry, um, how they could possibly think that it's okay to do this to people all of the time. I just don't. And um, and people are going to go bankrupt. They're going to go. I'm freezing my ass off. You want to know why? Because I'm not going to turn on my, my heater because I'm yeah. not going to pay for it anymore. Sweaters. Not. We have our blankets. We're wrapped up. <laughs> I know my, my son's like, my he's like, how says, cold is it in here? And I'm like, I don't care. Put really on a sweater. Cold. My husband says when we can see our breath, yeah. we'll turn on the heater. <laughs> <laughs> I've, it's been that cold in my house at times. It's not, it's actually warmer today in my house. It was warmer outside of my house yesterday than it was inside my house. Oh man. It sucks. It absolutely sucks. So again, we'll keep our eyes on it. We'll have Loretta Lynch back on uh, soon. We had her on last week. Um, thank you so much, Doug, for the $10 super chat donation. You guys are awesome. Wes, also with a $5 super sticker. You guys thank can you, also uh, throw us some money, uh, super chat, super comments, super stickers uh, during the replay. Uh, but again, the number one way to support the show, guys, the Nikki Maduro show dot com, the Nikki Maduro show dot com. Please become a monthly Patreon subscriber. Uh, and if you could bump up your donation, please do that as well. I'll get some sort of system together, figure out how to get uh, the official Madorable buttons. I have a limited supply, but mm -hmm. I know some people have been asking about them. Can't put it on the merch shop because it, they, it's not made through that company. I have them. That doesn't have it. So I have to figure it out. Mm -hmm. But I'll figure it out and I'll let you guys know. But that's another way to support the show as well. The email address, the Nikki Maduro show at gmail.com. 
Email me food ideas. Friday food tomorrow. I have to make something and I don't want to go out to eat. Deviled eggs. Should I make some deviled eggs? I mean, everyone knows how to make deviled eggs, though. Why don't you do Why don't you do the suggestion and do the deviled eggs with Tabasco in the mix? Ooh, I mean, a that's spicy not hard deviled to do. egg. All why right, if I don't have a better idea, maybe I'll make some for lunch. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll see. Um, yeah, send send me food ideas. It doesn't even have to be for today, but for the future, the Nikki Maduro Show at gmail.com. Friday food tomorrow. Emily Hoven will join us in the nine o'clock hour. We are going to be talking about whether or not voters are going to start dumping progressives. They're not going to vote for progressives anymore to fix San Francisco's problems. Mm -hmm. Is the pendulum going to swing very harshly the other way? So you won't want to miss that. Tim Sika will join us tomorrow as well to tell us what to watch and to stream. Thanks, everyone, for being here. We love you oh so very much. Talk tomorrow. Bye-bye. Nikki, you're all so awesome. You sprout like a beautiful blossom. You're all so the best. I really can't rest. You're all so awesome. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs>